Hello, welcome to the Made Simple tutorial channel. In this video we will install or upgrade to Android Studio version Hedgehog 2 of the 3.1.1 RC3, which was released recently. Then we will try to run the default Kotlin language on our Android cell phone. Currently, Android Studio version Giraffe 2022.3. When a stable release is installed on this computer, but now I want to use a newer version. Because there are several features that I need to start learning the Kotlin programming language. So I think it's better to use a newer IDE. Okay. Let's just close this program, then download and install the newer Android Studio. To download Android Studio, you need to go to this website, developer.android.com. On this page, you can download the latest stable release version of Android Studio, currently the Giraffe version, which is not the version we want to find other versions. Let's scroll down. Until you find this download archives, then click on it. Here you can see recommendations and so on. Next we also need to agree to the terms and conditions. After agreeing to the terms and conditions, we can choose from a number of versions of Android Studio to download. We will use the Hedgehog version. We chose this one because at the moment it is the last release for that version. Just click on the link. We will see that there is a download link option according to the operating system we are using. I chose Windows because I use the Windows operating system. Wait for it to finish. This may take some time depending on how fast your internet connection is. After completing the download, you can immediately run the file. So I'm going to double click this file to start the upgrade. Same thing for a new install. Because the Android Studio program is already installed on this computer, I will remove it first. For new installations, of course this question does not exist. Next I will use the default option so nothing will be changed in the next process. Just click Next until finished. The upgrade or new installation is complete. Let's just run the program. Because I upgraded the program, we can see that the project I created in the previous version is still there. We also see that the version in the top left corner of the screen has been updated correctly. We can also see here the new UI enable option. I'm going to activate it now by clicking this button. We need to restart Android Studio. OK. Next, let's add a new project. On this phone and tablet templates, select Empty Assetivity. Let's give a name for our test application. At this time, we don't need to change other parameters. Just click Finish. 
In my case, I need to install Android SDK 30 for platform. So I have to wait for it to finish. Okay, now it's loading, it may take a while, depending on how fast your computer is, so please be patient. While waiting, on the right side, in the assistant window, we can see what's new in Android Studio Hedgehog. Let's close this assistant windows. This has finished loading. Because we previously selected the empty activity structure, we can see here that Android Studio has created a file named mainactivity.kt, which already contains code in Kotlin language. We can find the file in the Kotlin plus Java folder, under the package folder. This is the file mainactivity.kt. We can see this folder structure in project format from this drop-down menu. This icon menu is to split the windows to show a preview. One of the primary benefits of using at Preview Composables is to avoid reliance on the emulator in Android Studio. This will preview the code annotated with at Composable and at Preview. Let me change it to John. We can see the preview updated accordingly. In this drop down of available devices, I already have one 6.7 inch Android phone. Because I upgraded it was an emulator device created from a previous version. You can add it easily. We can also see a list of devices by clicking this device manager icon. You may run the emulator from this icon or add a new emulator by clicking this icon. You just need to select the desired hardware, a PI version, and a few other things. I have already shown this in my other videos, so in this video I will not make it again. Let me close this. Next. Go to Setting Menu, I will change to Dark Theme and Zoom Bigger. Okay, it looks better now. Next, I will connect the Android phone using a USB cable. We can see that the phone is listed in the device manager. To connect an Android phone, you must activate developer mode. The method depends on the brand of phone you are using. Basically, open the settings app. Select Developer Options and then enable USB debugging. This is an example on a Samsung cell phone that I use for development. On other phones, the menu may be different. Detailed information about how to connect a cell phone to Android Studio can be seen on this site. The link is in the description of this video. Connect to your device using USB. If your device running Android 11 and higher, you also can connect using Wi-Fi. You can refer to this website. If you have difficulty connecting your Android cell phone to Android Studio. Next, now that our cell phone is connected, let's try running this application on that cell phone. As we have seen before, the Composable Preview section will be displayed in the Preview window. In the Preview section, we input my friend into the greeting function while in the main function. We input John. Let's run the program on a connected Android phone and see the results. Make sure the device is your cell phone. Then click here to run the application. It can be seen below that Gradle Bulid is running. We have to wait for it to finish. Okay, now it's finished. We can see the results on the cell phone. 
Hello John is written at the top left of the screen. Let's now try changing it so that the text is displayed in the middle of the screen in a larger font. Because we use Jetpack Compose, which is currently recommended by Google to understand it, we should look at the documentation first. Please see the documentation link in the description of this video. We can find out what the parameters of a function are by placing the cursor like this. Let's add the parameter to make larger font and change the alignment. I have added font size and text align parameters to the text component. Let's see how it looks on mobile. Let's try to modify the border and color of surface. For this red text, we only need to import the class. Now, let's see how it looks on mobile. To make the text in the middle of the screen, we can use columns or boxes. In this case, I will put the text in a column. So I will modify this greeting function by adding a column. I think we should remove this borer and background. Looks better. This is the look we want. We have reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video.